Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today's project is going to be super quick. So quick, in fact, that I think that this is probably going to be the easiest and quickest project I've done to date. We're going to be making a glasses pouch, just two pieces of fabric, a swivel clip if you want to hang them, and a press stud or Velcro if you don't have press studs or snap fasteners. This is it. Pop your glasses in there like that. Press it closed and we have a really simple glasses case. Don't you love the fabric? I think it's perfect. Very simple. I'm going to make these for the shop as well. I have lots of this fabric that has glasses on it, so I think it'll be perfect for glasses cases. So I think I will probably make up all of the fabric that I have. Now you may notice in the background there are a few changes. There's a little white patch over there. It's actually a really big white patch. I've knocked out a wall. My renovations are finished and all I have to do now is paint. So I just needed to get a really quick project done. So as soon as I've got this up, I'm going to go and paint the wall and then I can show you the updates to my sewing room. I'm really looking forward to showing you. Come along and I'll show you how to make these really quick pouches for glasses. All right, are you ready? All we need is two pieces of fabric and one piece of stabilizer for each of these products that you're going to make. You need a swivel clip, that's optional, and we'll want a little scrap of fabric to make a little hanging tab. Um, this is called Parlan. It's a product that I do sell on my website, but it's a lightweight fusible fleece. You can use anything you like, really, as long as it's not too heavy and bulky. You can use an iron-on interfacing if you wanted to. So I'm using lightweight Parlan or a Palin. I have taken my 8 inch square and fused the stabilizer to the outer fabric and I have my lining piece as well and I'll grab a scrap of fabric for my tabs. If you're only making one you want it to be about two by two and a half inches which is five by about seven centimeters. I'll probably get four out of this long strip. So you'll fold the raw edges into the center and then fold that in again and you'll have your two inch strip of fabric stitched down both long edges. So I'll set that one aside for a moment and we need to prepare our fabric. So with this one here I've got the stabilizer faced up. On one corner I'm going to measure three inches or about seven and a half to eight centimeters there's no hard and fast rule as to what this measurement should be. And then we're going to create a curve going around there. I have this curve template uh, and it's already got a three, in, three inch measurement. I can line that up on the side there. And there's my curve. But you can use a plate or a compass or even just draw it freehand. Before I go on to the next step, if you're making multiples of this, you want to sew down the long edge of both sides of your tab strip. If it's just a small piece, just quickly go and sew down both edges. Once you've done that, you can trim it down until you've got about a two and a half or six or seven centimeter strip and place the tab through your swivel. Set that aside for the moment. We now need to put our fabric layers together. So we've got our outer fabric and our lining fabric. I want to mark the corner where the curve is just so that I know where it is. And I'm going to flip this around so that it's facing right side up. And I've got the pin in the corner to my top right. It really doesn't matter which way it goes. It's just for me, this is easier because I'm making a lot of them. I want to make sure I have the opening in the same spot all the time. So when I place these two pieces together, 
you place right sides facing. By having my curve on the top right hand corner, my opening on this side, when this pouch is closed, it will fold across like that because I've got the outer fabric faced up, the opening is here, and it'll be much easier to do the top stitching that I need to do later, rather than having the opening on the top or the bottom. So if I turn that around, you can see the curve here, and on this side is where I'm leaving my opening. When we sew this together, we're going to start here with a back stitch, come all the way around, keep on going around and leave an opening of about three or four fingers width. I use the edge of my foot as my stitching guide which is usually about six millimeters or quarter of an inch so I'll run my foot up along the edge of the fabric here. I'm going to treat this line as the edge of the fabric and I'll stitch in around here and continue on. We'll trim this off later. The other thing you want to do is place the tab in between the layers of fabric. We've got our curved edge here. We're going to have our opening along here. This will fold across like that. Later on, we're going to place this next to the center. Fold that in half. That's the center of my fabric. So I'm going to place my tab to the inside. And I'll place that just to the right of that center marking. We can take that to the machine and sew it in place. Remember, start here with a back stitch, go around, follow this as your guideline, keep on going, finish here with a back stitch and leave that open. So I'll start here with a back stitch. And I'm coming up to the curved edge here. I'm not stitching on it, I'm stitching beside it the same distance that I'm doing along here. And I'll backstitch here. And I've left an opening of about three to four fingers width. Let's click the corners. And we can also trim the curve really close to the edge. Let's turn this the right way out. We're almost finished, you know. Once you've turned it the right way out, fold the edges of the opening to the inside. And you can go and press this so that it sits nice and flat. And you can see what I meant by having the outer fabric faced up with a curve on the right hand side and the opening on this side here. Shortly we'll be folding this over and this is the opening that we're going to be closing up. Now we're going to do a top stitch from this corner here, come up around the curve and just down until it starts to straighten up. So just along the top, and around the curve. Stop with a back stitch. And to finish up, place your outer fabric right side down. So now you have your curve on the left. Fold the fabric over. line up the side edge and the bottom edge. So this is where our little opening is underneath here. We're going to now top stitch from this corner here all the way down. You'll meet up with the top stitching on this side. Keep on going down to the corner and across the bottom there. And then all we need to do is put a snap on. When you join the curve and the straight edge, I'll do one or two stitches over the top and then I'll back stitch just to reinforce that and then go to the end. So with that sewn up, 
we can now put our little plastic snap on. So we'll need two end caps and an innie and an outie to put the snaps together. To determine where you want the snap, you can pop a pair of glasses in there and seat the fabric down neatly and then just make a decision as to where you want the snap. I'm going to go in line diagonally, come down to about here. My glasses are neatly inside there. And with an awl, I'm going to poke a hole through all the layers of the fabric. And if you need a measurement, I better pop my glasses on so I can see. I've marked a hole half an inch or one and a half centimetres in from the curved edge on that diagonal. Grab the flat side of your snap, place that on the outside. Pop one of your bits to the other side and then we'll grab the other flat cap and put that on the outside at the back. And we'll grab the opposing side of this. And then we can clamp that shut. And there we have the quickest little glasses case you could probably ever make. Easy. I have to show you where Coco sits. Hey Coco. <laughs> Coco, look at mummy. Say hello. <laughs> Since uh, remodeling my room, I've been able to find a space for Coco to sit. So when I'm not using my overlocker, she's got her little bed underneath there. I said it was simple and I didn't lie. This has got to be one of the easiest projects I've made. Of course, when I start these kinds of things, I go like a bull at a gate, don't think properly and make lots of mistakes in them. But I've taken all the mistakes out of there so you can get right to it and not have to worry about doing anything wrong like I did. Pop your glasses in there, easy storage. And with that little swivel clip, you can hang that to the inside of your bag, hang it to your keys. Maybe even attach it to a book somehow. Well, there's an idea for another video. <laughs> I have to come up with something. I've made four of these so far. I wanted to do a little bit of a time trial to see how they went. I did forget to put my labels on. Well, actually I didn't really, I was just a bit too lazy. So I'll sell these ones without the labels. From start to finish, they take about 12 minutes each to make. I think they're really cute. And given that the fabric didn't really cost me anything, it's just the cost of the stabilizer and my time and the clip, um, I think I might price these out at $10 each. I think I can get quite a lot done in an hour. I know I can make these a lot quicker if I have my production line happening properly. So I reckon for $10 each, these are going to go really well in the shop. What I'm also going to do with these and hopefully a lot of my future projects is to start writing patterns for them. A lot of us are visual learners and others need to have written instructions as well. I've had so many people ask for written instructions for my patterns. I used to write a lot of patterns when I was doing quilting. It's very time consuming, but I will write a pattern for this one. I'll pop a link to it in the description when it's ready, but it might take a while before it is ready. So once I do have patterns for it, I'll pop a link to my website. It'll be in the description eventually. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.